on this episode, Christian goes mad with power. You fools! <laughs> he creates lots of impressive patterns. This is bullet hell, baby. This is bullet hell. <laughs> But the higher you climb, the harder you fall. I received critical damage from that. What happened there? Hmm, water. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Lasers Academy. Welcome to our 62-ish episode of the Advanced Rock Tutorial. We are working on the patterns and I think today we're gonna get some mm, mm, the bullet patterns, right? Um, we're gonna get to a good spot because now things are coming together. We kind of worked on this last time around. We worked on the UI. The UI is kind of like in place. It kind of can handle most of the stuff. Now, what I want to do is, well, now what we want to do is we're gonna we have to figure out this whole aimed and static thing. How we're gonna solve that? Then we wanna maybe do the sometimes pattern modifier. And then we're gonna figure out the rapid fire thing, okay? One after another. Okay, I've been thinking. I've been thinking. With the aimed thing, right? So right now we kind of did a little bit of a bad thing here. Right now we're setting the angle here in the pattern editor, right? So we are creating a bullet pattern and in the pattern, bullet pattern editor will be setting a certain angle for a bullet. Does that make sense though? Is that how we're gonna handle things? We could create like an aim bullet and then in the uh, brain editor we could say like fire an aim bullet, right? And then that's fine. But then what happens when we say like, okay, now we're gonna fire a uh, bullet that's static, which means it's always firing in a certain direction. And then we have to create a second bullet to, for it to be static. So Aim bullets are one pattern and static bullets are different patterns. So we have to create different patterns for different types of bullets. That's a little bit concerning. But then also like for every single angle that we're gonna do, we're gonna create a, have to create a different pattern. That's a lot of patterns, right? Like because depending on how many you know different directions we're gonna fire bullets, we might like, let me think about, for example, about the basic schmuck tutorial where we had the um, boss fight, right? Like when a boss goes around the screen and then fires sideways and then upwards and then right. That's like three shots that we have to create here. That's a lot of shots. So maybe, I've been thinking, maybe a better idea is to make the angle something that is defined in the brain editor, right? So in the brain editor we say fire this shot type at this angle. Fire this shot type at this angle. And then uh, the pattern editor, this, this, there's going to be like a base angle for a shot and that angle is, will be defined by the brain editor and the, the pattern editor or the pattern system takes the angle from the brain editor and rearranges the pattern uh, based on that angle that was set by the brain editor or by, the, by, by brain system. Let me show you what I mean. Um, so where do we do this? What do we do? Do we do we just here pets? Pets make pet. There's the pet. Pet shoot. Okay. So here we're gonna say the enemy shoots this pattern at this pattern angle, pang, right? And then here, when we're creating the the bullets, when we're creating bullets, we're gonna say create this pattern at this angle, pang, right? And then here, when we create, we're gonna take the pang. And then when we create this, this bullet here, uh, instead of taking the angle from the bullet pattern that's kind of like set, like this was the angle of the, of the bullet. Instead, what we're gonna say, we're gonna just take this, this uh, argument from the function. We're gonna just take whatever we've been given as an angle, and we're gonna set the bullet to that angle. So now uh, when we do the pet shoot here, um, then we're just gonna set the angle. We're gonna set zero for now. So now we are shooting downwards and now changing the angles here on the, on the, on the pattern doesn't really change anything. We're gonna set, well, 20 makes no sense, but let's see, say zero. Mm. Oh, okay, we need to deal with that. Uh, bug where crash after bug. 
we need to deal with that in a second. Uh, okay, so let's say uh, let's angle is 0 0.6, but it's still firing downwards, right? So now the angle is kind of ignored. We kind of have to we might actually want to remove that angle property from the from the bullets because the bullets again the angle is now defined by the brain system. And this is kind of nice because that means that um, the, we decide on the brain level whether a shot is going to be aimed or is, whether it's going to be straight. And if it's going to be straight, then we can also decide at which direction it's going to be straight. Um, how would we decide whether something is aimed? Uh, something we could maybe do, I, I would suggest, something like if it's the, the angle is minus 99, <laughs> something like this, right? If it's minus 99, and then that uh, sig signals to the patch shoot function that this should be aimed. Uh, and we can now um, do this calculation here. So here is um, here we do go to something like if uh, pang uh, uh, equals minus ninety nine, uh, then and actually I have something copied over here. There's a little bit of a thing that I prepared. Bam. So this is like a formula that allows you to calculate the angle between two points that I copied from some other code that I had. And this is something I always copy from because I don't have trigonometry in my head, this 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 kind of trigonometry in my head. But basically what it does is um so okay, so we want so this is the player sprite, right? Um do we have a position for the player sprite? Do we have a, an object that does that? Where, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, we have PSPR. So we're gonna PSPR, and then the PY is gonna be n dot uh, y. Oops, and then this this is gonna be n dot x, right? Uh, and it's important. This is kind of weird because it's arc time two. This is kind of like a trigonometry function, uh, and first we're gonna go y and then x. And we're just going to take the difference between uh, the two locations that we're trying to calculate the angle of. Um, and then we're going to set pang to that. And this should give us always an aimed shot. Let's try that. Now the shots are all going towards the player. See, and then if you want to shoot uh, the bullet straight, we just put them to one. And then they're firing downwards. Is what I'm thinking. Is, is my thinking. I don't know. Maybe that's a bad idea, but I don't. I don't want to be like. I think the, pat, the the way I want to do is the patterns are really just patterns, like the different, the way you the bullets are looking, the way they they are arranging themselves on the screen, but not necessarily how they're being applied in a battle in a, <laughs> when enemies are fighting you. The way the enemies are fighting you should be something that's defined in the brain. Okay, so now that we kind of solve this, we kind of solve this. Let me uh, figure this bug <laughs> where it crashes. <laughs> what's what's with that? Um, so this should be here. I already I already have an inkling what the problem. So yeah, when we're at, at entering here, <laughs> this is tricky. Um, when you're typing in stuff, yeah, yeah. So we're doing a two num here, and that two num sometimes I think can be nil. I think that's the problem. Mm, so let's do something like. Um, type val equals to num type val and then if type val equals nil then type val equals zero can we do that is that a, is that a good idea let's try that blah 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 okay i had something like like this, yeah. Okay, good. That's that's, that's possible now. Cool, 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 cool. Um, right. Let me. Uh, okay, so that that figures out this part. Now I want to actually now that we that we decided that we actually don't want to have the angle property for our base bullets. This angle property, we don't want that. Uh, now that we decided this, uh, let me clean this up. Let me remove this property actually because we don't need that anymore. So now we can go two, three, four, five. Um, and then in the UI, we're going to remove this. 
no longer there's no longer an angle associated with it and then when we create a new pattern we're going to remove that i'm not sure band now we're going to create a situation uh, yeah 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 yeah. um so now with our data that we already have in there has too many entries now because now each base entry that we have has five uh, additional parameters like angle speed and so forth and but the ui that we have expects there to be just four so that causes some problems so um let me do, let me do a little translation script <laughs> I'm, because i'm lazy <laughs> that's the name of the channel uh for uh d in all data do. Uh, that's data right we call it data or paths we'll just call it paths for penal paths um del i p2 that's what i'm thinking i'm just gonna delete the, the second entry that's that's the okay and uh, that should now let's export this export it now we delete the, this little thing okay all right good so now we set it up so that um that we remove 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 the angle entry from each of our three base patterns uh when you create one that doesn't cause any problems no that doesn't cause any problems good excellent cool uh let us now tackle the next task um as I said, I want to maybe do, because we kind of have, we kind of can do static bullets, we can do aimed bullets now. These two are finished. Two, two patterns checked off our list. Now um, we go to the uh, third entry, and that's two things that we have to deal with. That First of all, it's like the sometimes fire, as I said, like sometimes we might have um, tanks on the ground it's kind of stupid that we're doing this maybe in pattern maybe that's a good good reason to do that in the in the brain pattern but broadly speaking tanks that only sometimes fire um there's a whole bunch a sea of tanks a whole army of tanks and just sporadically they're firing bullets but it's not really predictable it's just like sometimes it fires um and for that i want to maybe create a new modifier a new pattern module we just still don't have a good name let's let's call it a modifier and so this is not going to be called base this is going to be called sum i'm going to call it sum uh so let's let's create a new one called else my pad sum uh, it's going to be just like i think a good first modifier to use to test our system yeah so this is um, this is what creates a new pattern by the way um i'm just realized that maybe we're going to create a local variable called um pat top pat tube pat, pat, pat type pat type equals my pat one and then we can can check against this pat type so if the pat type is sum so this is again this is going to be uh, one of those things where um this pattern type doesn't create a bullet by itself it references some other bullet and it, it basically says like fire that other bullet that is going to be a different play on a different place in the list of patterns um but only at a certain percentage of times um so the first entry or entry number two in in that pattern module um that is going to be the reference to that bullet that you we're supposed to fire um so we're going to do something like let me see we're basically gonna um call make pat itself right we're going to basically say like make pat my pat two at the pang at this, this angle right we're going to create that other bullet sometimes sometimes let's for now let's go if r and d so there's going to be like a random chance and let's just make sure that for now we're going to make it always fire right so if there is a random thing happening then we're gonna we're gonna make this go i'm gonna create this pattern and then we're just gonna be basically like this red equals right or we're gonna set the return array to that pattern that that we generate and that's gonna be it now i'm gonna actually plug in the third entry and that in that uh, in that pattern sum pattern type 
that is going to be the percentage chance that the bullet will, will fire. Mm. I'm just going to plug it right in here. And that should be it. That should be all the code that we need to create to create this sometimes it fires, sometimes it doesn't fire effect. Uh, now let me uh, set up the UI for this. Okay, so here's where we, we have the different captions for the different uh, pattern modules. Um, but now it depends on what kind of module we're talking about, right? So we're gonna go if my my pet uh, one, if that equals base, then we are talking about the base thing, right? Else if, if that's sum, then we're talking about the sum type. And then else, I'm gonna do like an all purpose thing. All right, so the sum thing, we're just gonna have uh, SRC source and then perk percentage chance. That's all we need. And then for the else, something I wanna do is like for i equals two to a number of pets, number of entries in our pad. And then local my cap equals, we're gonna create an entry entry uh, caption array, and we're gonna add my cap uh, p dot dot i <laughs> dot dot. <laughs> I'm thinking and try. It's, it's not that complicated. It's just gonna do the caption here. It's fine. It's gonna be. It's not even gonna be great because this, the width of it will change. But uh, whatever. Good. Um. Good. 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 Uh. So we have base and sum and everything speech. Let's see if this works. No. Yeah, that's gonna be an uh, M else if in here. I received critical damage from that. What happened there? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. This is this is correct. I wonder if the problem is that uh, my cap is a uh, local uh, is declared inside the if statements. Um, let me let me let me do it like this. So now we're declaring the my cap outside of all those if statements. Yeah, that was the problem. Um, because if you def I think there's is a scope issue. If you define a local variable inside an if statement, I think that local variable only exists within the if statement, something like this. Okay, so let's create a new uh, pattern and then let's call this sum. Didn't work, I think, because <laughs> <laughs> because I think we are not setting uh, this is actually not possible not doing this anything in the in the UI function for this let me see enter pad uh, yeah we said it's tricky right oh yeah we we always set it to base no matter what you type in okay so this is now we we're solving this tricky part here um, mm -mm -mm. first of all uh, let's just set it to Let's just set it to whatever I type in it. Okay, um, first of all, we're gonna go, if, if we're changing something, we're gonna make sure if we're changing something, then, then, then that's bad. So if whatever we already have, is not what uh, we're typing in, and what we're typing in is not empty then. So we're actually typing something in. Uh, when we're typing something in, then we're gonna set this to the new thing. And then, so the problem is like when we're changing something to a different type, 
uh, then we actually have to kind of um, delete all of the entries that were in this pattern module before, right? So if there's like already like four entries because this was a base module and we change it into now this new sum module, then we have to delete the old entries and, and fill it with some new entries. So we kind of have to always create like this blank, uh, blank module. You know what? Let's do something like this. Um, I'm gonna go uh, my data uh, this equals create bl or make not make pad um, new pad. Do we have new pad somewhere? Oh, we we, don't, we have only a, a a string that is called like this. So we're gonna create new pad uh, of this type. Type text. This will create new patterns of the type that we indicate here, and this should be it, this should be it. Okay, so now we need to just create this new pad function here, and let's just create it right here. Okay, so we're gonna go if type equals base, and we already have that, then else if type equals uh, sum, then else end. Okay, um, we actually have this already. In, in the update function, we did that. See, here we're actually, when you're creating a new pattern, we already did do this. We create a base pattern and fill it with some default values. And now we just want to kind of like take this and put it in its own function that does it for all sorts of different types. So for example, here, uh, we can go, and that's gonna be return. All right, now we're gonna return our little Uh -huh. And it has four entries such as speed, animation, animation speed, and, and collision. Cool. So this is going to be the base, and the sum will look similar. Um, it's going to be uh, this, uh, going to be 1, and it's going to be 0 0.5, whatever. <laughs> like this. Uh, this is going to be sum. And if it's something else, then you know what? Then I'm not going to rock the boat and I'm just gonna. Uh, oh, this tube. Just just realized. Um, we're we gonna put the. We're gonna just create. I know. I, we don't know this type of kind of type. We're just gonna create a function with no entries, uh, like a array with no entries, just like this thing. Something like this. Let's see if this works. So there's an unclosed if else if else. I'm feeling this is a problem with those comma values here. There we go. Yeah, the, the too much brackets. Like this, let's try this. Okay, I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna call it sum. Boom, it works. So what if I click now? You can see that it is. It has like this kind of stuttery, uh, stuttery. Sometimes the bullet comes out. Sometimes it doesn't come out. That's what we wanted. Let's set it to zero. On now, I'm firing all the time, but the bullet only sometimes comes out. Cool, 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 cool. That's what we wanted. And now, if we set it to percentage one, it always comes out. And we can also make different bullet come out. That is the idea. Now I want to actually reuse this new pad here. Um, here when we're creating a new pattern, we're gonna go new pad. Um, let me see. Add pads. New pad. Base. So uh, we are reusing already existing functions, so they're all like linked together. Okay.
This is looking good, but now let us get to the to the, the difficult part, to the the things that this is this is now where it gets serious. The sometimes fire just it's okay, but it just was kind of like a more of a I put it in there because I knew that it would be a pattern that is easy to create, like a pattern modifier that is easy to create. Let's just think about the rapid fire or the spread. These things are com more complicated. And in fact, let's put the rapid fire a little bit later and let us deal with the spread first. I think the spread might be actually a little bit easier than the rapid fire. So we're gonna create a new pattern type, new pattern modifier, new pattern module. It's, <laughs> again, if you have a good idea of how to call this, let me know. I, I, I'm drawing blanks here. Uh, and let, let's call this, SPR spread, spread, spread. <laughs> um, this spread thing will probably evolve a lot over the development. I can already tell because this is going to be a very useful thing. But for now, let us make a, a thing where it's like uh, it will create this amount of copies of the original bullet. Now, first of all, it will reference a bullet. That's going to be the reference. Then it will create this many copies of that bullet and each copy will be offset by the angle uh, by this amount, right? So it will take the existing bullet and will offset, it will create a copy, but with an offset angle. It's, it's, it's gonna make sense in a second here. Um, let, me, let me now create the uh, UI for this actually. SPR spread, right? So it's going to be source, and it's going to be number, and we're going to go ang. So angle addition, angle, angle spread, <laughs> amount of angle spread. Okay, so the UI is set up for this. Now we'll actually make it so that the pattern gets created. And this is this is where it gets a bit iffy. This is this is where oof. SPR spread, right? Um, right, so we need to do a loop function. Uh, so a, a loop, a for next loop. So for i equals one, two, um, and we set entry number three. That was the number, the num, the amount of copies that we want to create. Right now we set copy one. Yeah, so that basically just like makes one copy of it and then nothing happens, right? So let's let's go like this. Um, now we're gonna go local my, uh, my pet. No, my pet we already have local new pet. Uh, we already have a function that is called like this, right? Local next pet. And expat next next pet <laughs> equals uh, we're gonna create that pattern that that we already had like this. Um, yeah, we're gonna use the source source pattern at this angle. And then what we need to do we need to take the this next pet thing and we're gonna add this to the return uh, return array right. So we're gonna go for p and all. Next pet, do we're gonna loop through all of the bullets, and we're gonna go add red p. We're gonna put all of the bullets one by one into the return array, so that when we loop through this multiple times, because this is a for next loop, right? So if we loop through multiple times, create multiple patterns from the source, all those patterns get generated, and then you know, dumped into the return area. So we're gonna have a huge return area with lots of bullets potentially. Uh, right now we are not changing the angle though. Um, so let's change the angle. Should we do it on a per bullet basis or should we do this on a, on a global basis? I think we should do it on a global basis, right? I'm not sure, let's, 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 let's try that, let's just try that, let's just try that. Um, plus, I times my pet, my pet four. So the fourth entry was how much we are shifting the angle for each copy, uh, but it should be I minus one because for the first time we're not shifting the angle. 
Let's try that. Uh, my cap. What? What? Oh. There we go. Okay. Spread. We're getting our spread. Oh, by the way. No, no, it's okay. All right, so we are creating those bullets. And now when we say, let's create two bullets. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> do, you, do you see what I'm seeing? I'm seeing a... <laughs> yes. Yes, I should have not given me this power, but they did somehow. <laughs> you fools, you fools. <laughs> and then now, and now, <laughs> so many bullets. <laughs> yes. Okay, so as you can see, we are getting, yeah, we can we can now create, we can create bullets, baby. We can create lots of bullets. And in fact, we can create uh, a lot of bullets. Let's, let's, get, let's just go. This is bullet hell, baby. This is bullet hell. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. Yeah, okay, so you can see, we can, we can create. We can, this already, this little, this little modifier, that's, that's all it took. That's all it took to create some really nice, really cool patterns. Cool, 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 cool. All right, this, this worked actually, this worked a lot better than, it, than I expected. Yeah, so you can see if, if, if we have only one, it just copies basically the already existing um, pattern. If we have two, then we're gonna create the original shot, which is just at an aimed shot at the enemy. Or at the player, but then it's going to be create a copy that is shifted by 0 0.05 uh, degrees, like pico eight degrees, right? So now the, there's like this second bullet that comes out that is a little bit off angle from where it's supposed to go, and then we when we create three copies, and now we have the original, and then two copies, and each copy is shifted more and more depending on the angle, and we can now change the angle. So it's for example, if it's the angle is larger then the copies are uh, spread further. The spread is, is, is wider. Uh, and if you have more copies, then obviously the spread gets even wider. There's some problems, obvious problems here. Let's just write down some problems that we that we have now. Okay, so this, is, this was really good for the spread. This was good. We're happy with the spread. Some problems with the spread. Right now, if the spread goes in one direction, it would be nice if it would go in the other direction as well, because right now we just like, it's always goes to the to the left, like uh, it always goes clockwise, but it would be nice if it would, we could have like this, because, you know, if I spread, then it's like maybe three bullets, one straight and one to, um, two to the sides, but now it's just always, we have, want to have three bullets and the one straight and then two through the other sides, but it's we don't really have that right now, right? That's not really possible. So it would be nice maybe if we have like some kind of like both sets. Um, maybe some kind of mirror function. Um, so that would be nice. Um, and then we kind of want to maybe think about this rapid fire thing. How do we do the rapid fire? Because this is this is all just being shot at one time, but it would be nice now to come back and return to the rapid fire. We have to come up with some kind of solution for that. But that part comes up in the dog is on. Mm -mm -mm, the dog is on. Yes, the dog is on. So we kind of like already wrote down the things that we're supposed to do in the dog is on. First of all, I want us to continue working on the spread thing, make it more flexible, make it um, allow us to mirror the spread somehow maybe. And we're gonna actually add a lot of flexibility to the spread. You will see the spread will become our workhorse. As you can tell, it's already very powerful, but it will become so much more powerful. Uh, and then again, uh, I want us to think more about the rapid fire thing. Now that we set up some infrastructure stuff, maybe it will make sense how we're gonna make the rapid fire work. These are the things that we're gonna do in the next episode, and these are the things for the dog zone. For now, I would like to thank you everybody who is supporting this show on coffee.com. Uh, coffee.com slash lazy is the address if you want to support the show. There's some beautiful people, wonderful people who have been supporting me over the years, and I would like to thank you for your continued support, especially in those long, 
tutorial series as, as you can see, there's not a lot of people who are making this kind of uh, tutorials for good reasons and I'm happy I get the opportunity to, to do this thanks to your support. And also one thing I want to do to this today is also do another shout out to a beautiful, beautiful uh, shmup that's being in production by Eric B. On the Discord he's sharing like all those beautiful uh, progress screenshots and GIFs and oh man they're amazing. I saw this uh, GIF recently which was you know uh, like a GIF of like swarming drones attacking the ship. Uh, it looks so good like the popcorn feel of those drones they're coming in at such high speed it looks so so nice uh, another thing that he shared is also this gift which is kind of like this big helicopter doing like a you know huge fire attack and this is just like such a flex uh, first of all the helicopter looks amazing but also like you can tell that the helicopter is not symmetrical and that's actually quite difficult to put off with pico 8 you're you're wasting a lot of um, sprite space if you use big sprites that are not symmetrical so I, it, it just feels like such a flex to have like this helicopter there looks super dynamic because of the rotating uh, uh, blades and also I really like how visible the bullets are like they really pop against that kind of like a little bit muted background really love this development and really love what Eric B is cooking I'm really looking forward to how this game will uh, play out when it's finished ah so excited so excited yes so uh, we are progressing as you can tell the system is coming together I know it was a bit complicated system and it's kind of like a little bit brain melty but you can tell that already we are getting this is becoming incredibly powerful very very fast and it's gonna become even more powerful on the next episode see you next time around guys bye bye